is a, uh, an open house type of scenario, uh, a little tour for some of the newer department heads that have never seen the building. Um, the fire station is obviously 1899 it was built and we just had brief and recent conversation that the, I believe the town hall was built in 1895 by the same uh, engineer and construction crews back in those days. So obviously this station is uh, 125 years old. Um, I'll show you a little bit about the station. Obviously the truck's going in and out and they pull right out onto Elm Street. Uh, you probably all may have at one point in time been stuck in traffic on Elm Street to allow the vehicles to back in. Um, but we'll come up this way a little bit and show you a little bit more about the damages that happens. Because so this is my engine one, one bay and engine three bay. Uh, engine one is first out to shoot all the time. Um, and, you, and you can see the, uh, the arches on the building are the antique arches. The first four bays are all exactly the same, exception of this one on, the, on my left here. That is the ambulance bay. The ambulance bay had to be uh, widened slightly because um, the ambulances are obviously higher and, and uh, wider than the fire trucks because of the patient compartment in the back. This truck has an inch on both sides coming out. So as they're driving it in, these lines do represent m multiple things. Obviously, it's the line for the rear tire to be on it or just near it. Um, sometimes uh, people or citizens will come by and sit on the bench or either bench and knock it just a little bit to the left or to the right. It, actually, the bench will get hit because that's how close uh, either an inch, either way. Um, so again, expressing the fact that I know there's frustration when people are in a long line waiting for the truck to back in. I have a lot of new employees. That's the reason why they're taking their time in and out. These last two bays were built in the 40s and 50s by the guys. While they were on duty, they all had side jobs as mason, bricklayers, carpenters. So when uh, Chief Favreau um, and Chief Gregoire were here, they said, we wanted, to, we wanted to extend the fire station, so we're gonna do it ourselves. So they basically really just did brick by brick while they were on duty um, and, made, and made these two bays. As you can see in here, that is the tower truck. If you remember how big the tower truck is, it's 33 or 34 feet long. It's stuck all the way up against the wall behind there because we have no more room. Uh, we have no more room to expand. We can't put a truck that size in one of those uh, four original bays. It just won't fit through the door. Um, and that's, you know, that there's another ambulance behind this one too. So everything's stuck in this, this one bay. Obviously, this is the second out the door ambulance and the one behind it is the third, do uh, third ambulance that goes out the door. Um, so everything takes time to move it out to the apron and uh, to, to respond to calls. So obviously the horn upstairs, the horn that used to go off many, many years ago when all the box alarms came in, that has been dismantled. It's, it's ancient history behind it. Um, and it's very hard to get uh, parts to make repairs for it. Um, the whole municipal fire alarm system around town was, uh, was taken out of service about, chief, how many years ago did we do the dispatch center? Four? Yeah, four or five years ago. So four years, four or five years ago, uh, we took the fire, firefighters that used to man the desk here at the, at, the, uh, at the fire station all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They man the radios and they man that fire alarm system. Um, it was so expensive to replace it and make, make changes and to move the head of it to the police station where the dispatch center is today. So we, we opted at the time, I opted at the time with the town manager's appro approval to shut the system down. It wasn't reliable. Um, as it was going, it was band-aided a lot. There was a lot of splices and things made to it, but that was pretty much really the reason why we got rid of it. So what I was gonna say is the horn does go off once a, once a week, and I'm just gonna leave it open that it can go off at any time because sometimes it does just go off. Um, and it doesn't sound the greatest either. It's, it's, it's failing. It's, it, it sounds kind of kind of kind of like a frog. <laughs> the, uh, the, the box yeah. alarms that used to come in when you, if you, obviously you grew up here, you heard the horn going a secret, a series of numbers. This is the the old chart, so people could figure out where the box alarm was coming from. So all these different numbers mean mean something to us in our meta, uh, our alarm system. Um, the, the box number used to get written on the chalkboard there when the, tr the first truck went out the door and everybody knew they would look it up quick on this board here and, and know where they were going. Within the general area, obviously if you lived on 700 Ashland Nav, it's automatically the box that's ringing and everybody, letting everybody know is 714. So if it was a fire, why they pulled the box, you'd be able to see the smoke. Uh, if it was a medical, we'd have to do a little bit more research with the police department to obviously find where, what the incident really is because people will just pull the box and run away. Um, but obviously that system is no longer in use. Come on down this way. 
so as I said before, the earlier, uh, the dispatch, the dispatch that used to be a sign here behind that glass um, is now, all calls are being answered down at the police station. So we still use this as the, as the backup to the police department. Um, and we're, we're trying to put it together to make it a, 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 a secondary, a full secondary uh, site. But right now it's just the backup um, and we keep moving forward. Um, and you can take a walk in through that door right over there. That's the kitchen. Head on right in there. So of course, firefighters love to cook. We feed the DPW on stormy nights. Police officers come in occasionally and have their coffee. They eat good here in the fire department. This is where the guys spend a good majority of their time. They do their, they do their conversations, their training. Coffee shop talk happens here. Um, when the public, the general public comes in, this is where they gen generally end up. We offer them a coffee or, or a seat at the table and we, ch we talk and chat with them. Um, and again, it's shared with the dispatch area. Um, as you said, I, I've, history is huge here. Um, everywhere you look, there's fire photos, um, pictures of old, old, old staff that was here, old firefighters, people that have, most of them in the older pictures obviously have passed away. Uh, but uh, we, we keep a good uh, tradition in regards to uh, the fire service. What, one of the bigger sellers when we got the monies from the town for the, um, uh, for the new fire station, one of the big things was cancer causing agents on firefighters. Um, so when a firefighter goes to a fire, uh, they're exposed to that heavy, heavy black smoke. They have their air pack on. They get covered with all, all those carcinogens. Um, one of the big sells, and in, in obviously in today's day and age, um, firefighters are having, getting cancer or, or, or contracting cancer because of the experiences that they've had. It's not when they had their masks on and went into the, into the building, it was when they came out of the building and all that heavy soot and, and carcinogens are on their body and it just falls off. It's like dust particles. The big thing for us is that this new fire station that we're building has a separate area where all dirty gear goes. So it gets locked into a room, it gets laundered, we launder our own stuff, it gets dried in that room, it's a negative pressure room, it's filtered. So all of those carcinogens are actually excreted from the gear and then it gets hung back up in their own lockers outside of, outside of any other area. Um, as you see here, this is all our gear. It's right next to our kitchen, right next to the only bathroom we have downstairs. It's a, a very small, one toilet, uh, it's a half bath, um, and everything is just packed, packed in here. So um, that, and that was one of the big sales was the cancer room and cancer area because that's, it's, it's horrible. I have friends at 42, 43 years old that just got diagnosed with prostate cancer. So Chief, you wanna head out and throw that door? Yeah, we'll, we'll head into the lobby. So I always like to point out the most important fact of this building. Uh, we're gonna bring up the topic, First Amendment rights people. That door is pretty much always locked and has to be answered by uh, a fire alarm person that's working inside there, one of my firefighters, or myself or Stacy, our admin upstairs. So obviously the First Amendment rights here, we had to block off as described and, and told by the previous town manager. We have the uh, employee sign here, and this is our makeshift uh, little sign so they can't access the stairs. The history of the fire department, a good majority of it's in this hall, uh, but the rest of it obviously is upstairs, um, and that's where we'll end up going upstairs next. But obviously I have two or three guys, uh, Lieutenant Wilson um, and Josh Brack, firefighter Josh Brackett, that have recreated this whole area. It was dusty, pictures were falling apart. About five years ago, uh, they, they said, Chief, can we take the pictures down and restaple them and re-glue them? Um, so they took their time and they did all that. The DPW came in and put a fresh coat of paint in the whole upstairs, this area and upstairs. Uh, so we do a lot of it by ourselves with our own pride and, and uh, again, to keep tradition going. That picture is the most up-to-date picture of the entire department and believe it or not, I've probably got just by looking at it, uh, four, maybe four people are already gone from that picture and that was in uh, 2021. And this is the fun-filled part of the fire station. We've done a lot of work here over the many years in regards to this, but um, obviously just before COVID started, uh, we, we made this kind of like our fire department operations area. We had, you know, extra uh, equipment for COVID-19 protection for our firefighters, masks, gloves. We had, this table was completely filled. This is all ambulance billing stuff right now. So this is where the revenue comes from. So we have a guy here that does the ambulance billing stuff and sends it to our billing agency. Uh, but yeah, we, so we've, we've adapted this area and made it ourselves. And then this whole area here is where, uh, is, our, is our hall. This is from 1939. Uh, this picture has 
almost every member of the fire department sitting, sitting at these tables. We used to have a spaghetti supper back then, um, and this was the pay night supper is what we'd call it. Um, there's probably 100, maybe 110, 115 guys, and they were all either full-time, uh, call department members, and auxiliary members. These are just two of the examples of the bunk rooms that these guys rest at. Yeah, so obviously these two walls outside make bunk rooms, and the guys, the guys back in the, probably in the 40s maybe, or 50s, they added these two walls and put bunk rooms in each one of these, these rooms here. The only last thing I'll leave you with, if you don't have any other questions, is that, well, a couple things. There is a fire pole here. To get downstairs to the first floor, we don't use it anymore. It's, it's out of shape, it's, it's not functional. We do, when we do, do have tours of Cub Scouts or small groups of smaller children, one or two of the guys will come up here and go down the pole and hopefully nothing happens, but it is over in the corner by the only shower that we have in the entire building, one shower. So again, that was one of the other perks of the, uh, the new fire station. We, we, it takes 29 guys a long time to use the one shower because that's all you have. Um, I'll be honest with you, most of the guys, to include myself and the deputy, we go home and shower. So we're exposing our family to whatever we got uh, in the building fires, so cool.